thing by it because it's just going to sit in a back office doing nothing. It's going to grow. The CIU is going to grow, but she could be getting money off the UNTB. So that was one was going to be a, a definite question after, you know, because so somebody doesn't need to have a thousand CRUs to be able to stake them, correct? But, I mean, if, if you've got 50, you just have to divide the amount 100 into 50. And obviously, it's going to be very minimal per month. But as that grows, it's, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more. It all adds up. So... Right. So if somebody had, you know, say 750 CRUs, what they would do is they would say, so they would go six, let's see, they would go 750 divided by 1000. That equals 0 0.75 times 40. Yep. Equals <laughs> 30. So they would get 30 UNTBs. For their 750 CRUs. Yeah, which at, at, um, at 10 cents, as they're going on at, that's like $3 a month. But if they go up to a dollar, that's $30. If they go up to, um, you know, $10, it just grows from there. But not only that, their CRU value will be growing too. Right. Because, I mean, they're going to be launching the CIU on the market uh, or depending on what the SEC say, there are rules that they have to go by, depending on how many they're going to be launching, which I think is going to be about $2 billion. And that's probably going to go on at $2 starting. So, um, you know, already people have made money before it goes on the market, if you know what I mean. So, from... 10 cents or 25 cents you know the thing is to me the just the fact that bitcoin is worth ten thousand dollars each right now when it's actually backed by nothing mm -hmm. i mean it's literally backed by nothing <laughs> nothing the only People thing are making lots of money on it is speculation and then and then the fact that it's um the fact that it's um, it's something that's not like controllable by the government, you know, it's mm. something that the government doesn't like because they can't control it. Yeah, it's something that the be government late. can't steal from you, can't take from you, can't tax you on, and that kind of thing. Unless you take it out and spend it, and tell them, you know, show them where you're spending it. <laughs> Otherwise. Otherwise, as far as they're concerned, it doesn't even exist. And so that's a big driving factor because I know there's a lot of people in this world that are like me that just literally hate the government and hate giving the government money. And, you know, it's like a perfect example is our house here. You know, we paid our house off over 10 years ago, but we'll never own it. And every year they raise our rent on it. And when I look at our rent bill and I look at the... Uh, what that money is going to there's about 25 items on the list and there's not one single thing on that list that i would voluntarily pay for not one well there is one there's mosquito abatement i think i might be willing to to pay for mosquito abatement <laughs> voluntarily so you paid the house off but you don't own it well nobody i don't know how it is over there for you in new zealand but here in america we have something called property taxes. And, and with property taxes, that means you don't own your house. And I tell people all the time, they go, you can never own your house. They go, what do you mean? I go, well, you gotta pay your rent to the government on it. It's called property taxes. And they're like, oh, that's my fair share. I go, well, whatever. You, maybe that's your fair share, but what it means to you to means simply is that you don't own it. And if you think that does, it doesn't mean that, try not paying them. Try not paying them. I mean, we, we have happens. rates here. We have rates. But that's for the roading, the lighting um, services around the cities. That's normal. The rates, we pay that, you know, yearly. Well, it shouldn't be attached to your house. You know, no, we don't like, have a tax for our house. God, no. I mean, it's but a tax. Here in America, you oh, can't ever own a house. You, If you don't pay your property taxes, 
and every year they raise them. Every single year since we've That's lived disgusting. here, they, they've gone up, and they just keep going up. And and you know, like I said, if if there was something on that list that I actually agreed with paying, I might not have such a huge problem with it. But you pay that in Corolla really in Canada. Do you pay property tax in Canada? Yeah. You do? Oh, yeah. Hey? Yes, we do. How, mu how much do you guys have to pay? What's the percentage? I have to double check that with Roger because <laughs> that's the part I never asked him really, but he would probably knew, know like really how much it is. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. I mean, if you, you own, guys are not uh, paying? no, if you own the land, which we do, and the house that's on it, and when you pay it off, as much as that in in itself is the biggest, you know, criminal offence to paying it interest over 25, 30 years to the bank. But that in itself, once you've got the deeds to your house, that's it. We won't be paying any more tax. We won't pay any tax on it now. We also don't have uh, property, uh, what do you call it, capital gains. So when we sell, we don't pay tax on what we make on it. But in Australia, I think they, no, they haven't done it yet, but they're trying to make it for people that have got two houses, like holiday houses. Not that we have, but most people, you know, some people have got two houses because they've inherited a family home. They have, if they sell that for a profit, they have to pay capital gains tax. It's the same in the UK, I think, but not here yet. <laughs> so, but no, property tax. I've never heard of that. Wow, that's ridiculous. And yeah, for what? It really is. Here in the in the so-called land of the free and the home of the brave, you can't even own a roof over your head. And they call us. You call yourself free, and you can't even own a roof over your head. Come on, really? So what do, what do they put down? what it what it is what you get for your money or for the tax is it well, is it itemized goes into the so-called schools it goes into this it goes into that it goes into the freaking you know like i said i think there's about 25 things on the list all you of them of which i would never pay a dime for if i if i had my choice i would never pay a dime for any of it except for mosquito abatement that's the only thing i'd be willing to pay but even that i wouldn't want that attached to the roof over my head I, I think I think you I, I think you might be getting confused with rates because we still pay rates, but those rates are for like services outside of our house, like for the road roading and the lighting. Is that what is that what that is? It's got no, nothing actually, to do with our all, house. <laughs> all of our all of our roads and stuff are paid for with uh, money at the gas pump. Oh, every, okay. every single gallon of gas here in the great state of Utardia has 47 cents. Right now, it's 47 cents per gallon is the tax. That's split, that's split almost equally between the state and the federal government. Right. And so that's, if you look at how many billions of gallons of gas get sold, that's a lot of freaking money and it's never enough. It will never and you got you guys out. drive massive trucks over there as well, don't you? Yeah, well, we, we, we drive, we we drive, drive everything of... from little beer cans like Rodgar's car to uh, <laughs> big giant diesels <laughs> like, the, yeah. like the thing he's driving in right now as he's driving down the road. You know, <laughs> I mean, we got it. But that's where the money comes from for, for that. But every year they keep raising that too because that's one thing about the insatiable appetite of government there will never ever ever be enough money for government to waste mm. and they always find the ways to waste it as fast as possible and there's actually a system built in here in the united states where they they allocate a certain amount of money to a government agency and if that government agency doesn't spend all of that money in their fiscal year, then they don't get as much the next year. And so they, they literally, these government entities will go on wasteful government spending sprees at the end of their fiscal year because they simply have to get rid of the money. 
they got to get it out. Otherwise, they'll get a, they'll they'll lose. They'll, they won't get as much the next year. And uh, you know, so it's it's designed to break us. It, the whole thing is mm -hmm. is just a giant criminal extravaganza. And that's why I'm so excited about this, because this is something that that they can't they can't control. They can't you know they can't own this. They can't tax this. They can't you know if you well I would be careful right. about that JJ because like if you need this money to go into your bank they will tax it oh, the yeah. minute that this money goes in as paper currency you're done and right. like we've found an account accountant here who understands cryptocurrency law and we're sort of tempted to you know get in contact with him and ask him what what his opinion is he's been an investor in cryptocurrency since 2017 yeah. so he knows quite a bit about what to do but eventually you're going to have to put the money in your bank. So, you know, in order to live, uh, I mean, there are ways around it, but you can't do everything sort of behind, behind uh, closed doors. Well, that's the thing, you know, is it's like with the money that I make in my life anyway, up to this point, um, what I've done and what I encourage people to do is by being your own boss, by having your own business, especially, something like the Kangen water business, like literally now that I have my Kangen water business, like everything I do is related to my business. Everything. Mm. Everywhere I go, I've got these hats on. Everywhere I go, I got these shirts on. Everywhere. I, my truck is littered with advertising for my business. I got my trailer. Everything I do, everywhere I go, I'm always talking to people about my business. I'm always giving out cards. And here in the United States, if you are doing activity to try and build your business and make money, that is a tax write-off. Yeah, same here. So literally everything I do in my life practically is a tax write-off. And so that's what I kind of teach other people how to do. And that's what I've been doing for the last... Just, gotta, just save years. the receipts, you know. Save yeah, the receipts probably. and find a good accountant. We, we went to Australia last year on holiday, but we went to a conference for, in Adjic and um, the whole lot was um, just put down as a business trip, which it was. So, yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah, so we'll get started great. here. Yep. So um, what I wanted to talk about today, have you got many more coming on, JJ? I'm, I'm not positive who all is going to end up coming on today, but, um, you know, whoever does, and I'm going ahead and, and recording this as well so that we can get the information out there to those who are not able to be here. Um, and hopefully this can be like a final thing to help everybody understand exactly what they wanna do when we hit the market or before we hit the market, that kind of thing. Ali, I think was gonna come on. She had quite a few questions, but she's not here. So I don't who know where that? she is. Callie, is it? Oh, Callie. Yeah, I'm not sure why she's not here. Um, but maybe she maybe she's just running behind or something. Maybe I'll even send her a message and say, "Hey, you coming in?" But I know she's part of the group, so she probably got the message from the Healthy Entrepreneur um, Investment Group. But um, okay, all right. Well, firstly, um, I'll address the general um, rules and regulations of the CIU to start with, because all everyone here in the room has um, purchased an EIP education information package. So when you do that, your <laughs> CRU is locked up for three years. That's standard. Okay. Now after the first year, 365 days, 1% of your investment gets unfrozen, which means that it's unlocked and it's ready for you to either turn into fiat currency and spend it or reinvest it back into the company. Okay. So on that note, um, when we're talking about reinvesting money back in, because recently I had a conversation with a person who was quite keen to spend their money as soon as, you know, it's made a bit of money. And um, the five commandments of a private investor that Andre teaches in the training that we purchase um, one of the first commandments is to 
save 10% of your income. Now with that, he says, you know, to reinvest it, to invest it and study and get advice on the markets. And that's how he has grown his massive personal portfolio and he's a multimillionaire because of it. And um, by reinvesting his money rather than just saving it in the bank, it's grown. And so each time it's grown, he's reinvested it. And then, because if you just keep spending everything that you own, you can end up down the Googler. So the other four commandments are to control your expenses. And as he said, if you actually knew how much you spent and monitored it, you could probably cut your costs. If many people say, well, I can't afford to even reinvest a cent, you know, because I don't earn any. Um, Protect your funds, start investing, obviously, and learn to earn more. Because a small amount is not necessarily going to give you a big amount back. But the more you add to your investment, the more it's going to grow. So when 1% gets unlocked after the first year, of course, it's your choice because it's your money, how you take that out. After the second month, another 1% gets unfrozen, unlocked, and after the third month, the same. And this continues until three years is up and then the total amount comes back. I can't remember, it might be like the fifth, sixth month when 2% gets unlocked and then another 2% and then it goes to three and it sort of speeds up towards the end. So that's the basis of the EIPS purchase that you've, you've bought, okay? Now with this, CRU portfolio that you currently have, and that depends on how much you've spent. Um, when they launch on the open market on the 1st of October, we can stake that CRU. You can stake that CRU, and we don't know how because we haven't seen the back office. Like, well, we've seen it briefly on Saturday night, but it's going to be a case of like click here or click there. <laughs> So it can't be too hard to sort of understand. But when it comes to it, by staking your CRU on the open market with all the sharks and the whales, um, investors out there, what the initiative that New has come up with is their trading coin called the UNTB, which is called Unit Token Blockchain. Um, every thousand CRU that you own and this is not including ones that you haven't paid for so any ones that you've got on an installment package you don't own you only own them once you've paid paid for them and each month that you you put more installment in you get that CIU equivalent and the and and therefore you own those coins so you can't stake those coins that you don't own obviously so so when you get your, your CRU, 1,000 CRU is equivalent to 40 unit token blockchains, unit token, UNTB. Now, that 40 is, is a rough estimate at this stage because the company has based it on however many members they've got, which is 1.5 million, however many members are active and have got a lot of CRU in their back offices or even some CRU and will be staking them on the exchange. Now they've based it on 700,000 people staking their CRUs, which will roughly give us all the equivalent of 40 UNT. It'll, it'll be 40 UNT TB equals 1000 CRU. So that, amount could be a lot higher. We could get 50 UNTB or 60 if 700,000 people don't stake all their coins when we go live. And some people might just want to leave them trucking along because, um, you know, there's, or some people might not even know what they've got. You know, this is the case in many cases that some people have got lots of free ones and they don't even know, you know, what they're doing with them. So, at this stage, it's um, you, you divide the amount of CRUs you've got by 1,000 and you times that amount by 40. And that will give you the amount of UNTB that, will be tra that you trade on the open market. Now, the UNTB is actually worth, once it goes live, at one cent. 
So if you've got 50 UNTBs and they're going for one cent, then you, you work out per month as they're going to be paying the, the bonuses, I shouldn't say dividends, but the bonuses on the amount of UNTB that you've got. Now, the CRU, on the other hand, is not, you don't have to do anything with the CRU because that's just going to go up in value as the more people outside purchase the CRU and more of us, you know, in the VIP club. So the CRU apparently is going to go on at $2, um, depending what the SEC say, apparently. It's the, they're the ones that sort of set the price depending on once they've sort of put everything finalized in place. So um, as your CRU is growing and as more people are buying the CRU from the outside world, and we've been told on Saturday that there's going to be a lot of very, very wealthy investors putting money into this to buy the CRU. Now the CRU, there's 80 billion all up and this will go on till they've run out, I guess, or, or over a period of time. So they only launch a certain amount at once. And I think they're going to be launching 2 billion, one, either 1 or 2 billion when they launch. Now, coins like Ripple, for instance, um, they trade a billion coins a day. So there's no reason why that can't happen to us and even in the first month. So you can see how the, the coins are getting chewed up by people buying them from the, the external world, which is a lot more than what we are currently. Now, when that happens, the price of the CIU is going to go up, which is your investment. And your investment is staying there because you have the UNTB working for you. And of course, that's all going to go up at the same time. Now, in the case of unlocked coins, a lot of people are getting confused here. Unlocked means that they're unlocked after the first year, the 1% that you own. However, they recently launched the internal exchange, which was like a testing platform for when they go live to the big one. And also they wanted to get rid of a lot of like cheap coins before they go onto the market because they know there's people around the world that have got millions of CIU. They joined a year ago, March, so 2019. And in those days you could buy 500 million coins for $8,000. And now $8,000 only really gets you um, whatever it is. Probably like, I can't remember what it is, 10,000 coins. But they were talking like 5 million coins when they first launched. So there's people there that have got a lot of coins and they want their money now. And if, even if they make a few pennies or cents, they're quite happy with that. And, that's, and they knew that was going to come because that's the way it works in the world. So um, it's given the market a chance to sort of like not get dumped with all these cheap coins. So, and people have been snapping them up. The price today was 12 cents. Like two weeks ago, it was 7 cents. Some of them were 5 cents if you got up in the middle of the night. And that's normally when countries like India wake up and they're all trading. And you can sort of just tell by the timing throughout the world of what's going on. So anyway, the unlock coins that people have purchased on the exchange. Now, this is different altogether to what you've got in your back office. And I, Dwayne, you may have some. I know JJ's got some. But generally, everybody else probably hasn't. I don't know, Carol, if you've got any unlock coins on the exchange. Yeah, we bought some, like we staked okay. them already, but I don't know if that uh, would be a good idea to unstake them and stake them for the three year. Right, well, this is this is what I was just going to just go over. I mean, okay. none of this is anyone else's business but your own, because it's like me saying, you need to sell your house, Carol, or you need to buy this. So, you know, this is your investment. This is your decision. However, we need to know what options there are. The 8% that they've just offered at the weekend ends on the 31st, on the 30th, not the 31st, the 30th of September. It's only a very short time span for all these people that have got like hundreds of thousands of coins to lock them up so that they get a massive return, huge returns, but it stops the market getting dumped 
because that's what happens with Bitcoin and all the others where they just bottom out and then everyone's jumping into the next deal. So they've cleverly put this together and it's good returns, but it's locked up for three years. So if you don't want to take that money for three years, then go for the 8%. Now they're paying 4% in CRU every month. And I think over, what do they say? 10,000, uh, 100,000 CRUs, if anyone's got that amount, will bring you back 250,000 extra CRUs, which by then could be worth a fortune in three years' time. You know, so you could be cashing in both ways on that one. However, the unlocked coins that you've currently got staked will continue. That will just continue on. I had finally confirmed this morning through Andrew Hawkes that Andre did mention that they would consider doing that, but I think it's going to happen. So everyone that's got any coins that are staked, you just keep them as they are. Because as soon as you stop that staking, you're going to lose for that month. So anyone that's got anything, you know, put on at 2.5 right now, and you want to keep it, then just let it roll up, roll over into when we go live. And nothing else should be different to what we've got now. It's just that this option for the 8% has come about because one, it stops, you know, the market getting flooded. And two, it gives people a longer term investment. Because one of the trainings that Andre talks about is having liquid assets. And this is something that you may need to sell in order to make your money back to pay for something fairly soon, not locked up for three years. And so he thinks that everyone should have 30% liquid assets and 70%, you know, solid locked up for longer term. So you've got to do your own sort of judgment on what you want to do on that, really. That's, that's all we can say on that matter. So if anyone's got any questions from here. I was up. wondering if it might be who to um, share my, um, um ah oh, shoot hang on one uh, second like, no. we only staked them a couple of weeks ago like it's still the month of september so we would be probably good doing like unstaking them and stake them for the eight percent right oh many people are corolla you know okay. people that have got lots of coins are going for the eight percent i mean some of these people can afford to really diversify they've got like massive portfolios so when you're dealing with like 30,000, 30 million CRUs, you know, you can, the world's your oyster. But, um, you know, some people prefer to have something that's short term. I mean, the other thing that you have to consider here, and this is, yeah, sorry, I should have written that down. If you don't have any unstaked, if you don't have, start again, if you don't have any staked, whether it's on 8%, for three years or the 2.5% um, which we've currently got, those CRUs will start to get unlocked. And in our case, that will be April where we get well, May 1%. And by then we might want to keep that. So this is where you have to sort of think, well, you know, you have to have your own plan of what you want, where you think you want your life to be in six months time or a year's time. Can you afford to like lock everything up? Can you afford to keep certain mats staked? We've got some loose coins. We're not going to stake. We're not going to stake anywhere because by Christmas time, if things have gone up so much with the CIU, we might even sell some, which will give us a bit of holiday money. So that keeps it loose for us to, you know, to play with. You've got to have the unlocked coins to, to start with, uh, Marilyn. You understand that? They're not, they're not just coins that you buy like we've currently bought with the packages. And you buy those off the exchange now until we launch. And that's play money. I see it as sort of play money if you don't want to stake them. Otherwise, if you stake them, then, you, you know, you have to sort of like accept that one is for three years very very good returns like any long-term investment and the other one you know you just carry on doing what you're doing or you pull it and naturally you're going to lose for that month's 2.5 percent 
Does that make sense? I'm just a little confused and I know I gotta do some more education on all this. I'm learning as I'm going, as I told you. Um, what I wanna know is if mine are, I'm, I don't even know, am I in the state or am I not state? I don't know. I have no, not. Yours are like everyone's right now, Marilyn. They're just sitting in your back office in your portfolio. Okay. All once right. we well, go to the once we go to the external exchange on the first of October, that's when we have the opportunity to stake them. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, uh, does it show anywhere that we have them staked right now? Because I can't see that on my uh, back office, and I don't also see on my back office. I don't know uh, the the UNTBs. Does it show no, any? No, we're not getting UNTBs till the 1st of October once we launch. But it, so the back office doesn't tell you that though, if you have any I'm or not. I'm not sure. It will do once we launch. Yeah. But we will have a different back office to what we've currently got, slightly different because it's going to be different. <laughs> so, and that won't be till the 1st of October. Okay. So you just got to leave it as faith that it's, it's done. And it will happen okay no no we have to stake them ourselves we have to stake our own amount of ciu that we want to stake and there will be the option like we've got now in the staking part of your back office to stake but so that's that that's what we can do once we launch so the, the one the ciu that that are not uh unlocked yet we uh, should just take them all October 1st or what would your opinion be on that one? The ones that are unlocked right now and staked, is that what you're saying? They're unlocked and staked. You can choose if you want to unlock them um, and put them into the 8%, but that has to be done before the, 20, the, before the 29th of September because that's just a, a short deal before they launch, okay? I'm, it won't I'm, be after the 1st of October. I'm just saying about the, the ones that are not unlocked, like the one that are not unlocked, we could all uh, stake them all on October 1st, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. And I think it'll be fairly easy to do. I don't think it'll yeah. be like, and we're all, we all know how many <laughs> Facebook groups, webinars, lives, you name it, the world, world will be out for us all to follow and know exactly what we're doing. But at this stage, we're only getting brief ideas of what the back office is even going to look like, but I don't think they're going to make it hard to do. Otherwise, no, it'll be I, a... think <laughs> I know, I know for me, you guys, one thing I'm planning on is whatever extra money I get over this next two weeks, I'm going to go into the, into the uh, internal exchange and I'm going to buy, I'm going to try to buy as many of these unlocked units as I possibly can between now and then. Um, if I'm going to yeah, twelve cents I today. much into this, but I'm, I'm planning on over these next two weeks. It's kind of insane not to, because you can get them for so dang cheap and they're all unlocked and you can go in and, and stake them. Yeah. And yeah. 90%, percent, 96% is a heck of a return on your investment for a three year period of time. 96% per year. That's crazy. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, and you know, what's cool about it. And I don't know whether we were going to, you know, you're going to get 4% that's going to go into your CRU. And then you're going to get 4% of that that's going to go into your bonus wallet that you can actually spend it. So you're getting... Um, no, I think it's only CRU, JJ. I thought that it said that was 4% was going into the bonus and 4% was going the other way. I've got it here somewhere. It would be good to clear that up and make sure that we're not getting anything wrong on that because of course I don't want to be sharing any bad information with anybody about this. It's too dang important. So if you look at the staking conditions, 4% is added to the CRU in CRU. And what have we got here? 4% um, is added to the staked amount. And 4% is accrued in the form of unlocked CIU used in the internal exchange for staking. So 
they'll be splitting the CRU that you get from the 8%. So you get paid in CRUs. Right, but the, half of them are unlocked, which means you can take them and, and yeah, utilize yeah. them, right? You can yeah, do whatever sure. you need to do with them. Yep, yeah. So you're basically getting 4% liquid funds and 4% locked up investment. Which is all growing at the time as well, at the same time. So anyone that we know, anyone that's been in this for a long time that knows what's going on will never sell their CIU because that's your investment, that's your asset. And the, the coins that we get to trade on your original investment of your CIU um, is gonna be earning you money. So you're getting bonuses based on your CIU. So you wouldn't sell your CIU. Right. I think you'd really kick yourself in a few years time. Yeah. Could be a few, in a year's time, could be six months. But So Dwayne, your question about the staking, where can you find what you staked? Do you want to share yours or, and then, sure. oh, yeah. JJ, you want to share yours or? There you go. You can share now. By the way, everybody, we got Michael, Michael Cron. Is it Cran or Cron? How do you pronounce it, brother? It's Cron. Cron. <laughs> we got Michael Cron in the room. He's one of Ryan, Ryan's buddies. He, he, um, He's just basically listening in, um, and and we're going to have a meeting afterward and catch him all completely up to speed. I thought, yeah, it ain't going to hurt you to listen in because this gives you the end results of what's going on. But but Michael's one of our fellow Kong Kong brothers, and um, he's um, well. Welcome to the family, Michael. Thank you. Very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So just so you you guys know. And um, I think this will be good for you because this, this is kind of the end results of where you're going to be if you decide to jump on this incredible train. And um, so anyway, let's uh, go ahead and Dwayne, if you want to share your back office, this will all be good, good yeah. stuff for you to learn and good stuff for all of us to learn. Okay, that should be there. Did it happen? Yeah, we can see the screen. So you go back up to your portfolio. This is just you on the trading page. Okay, so hit the portfolio in the middle again. Now, let's have a look. Can you see there on the right, it says unblocked CRU? Yes, 42. Mm -hmm. And, um, just go back up to the portfolio again. So, cause it should show, so you've got 2,309 CRUs and those are um, locked up, but you see the unblocked ones there. So if you go to, um, uh, where would you go to from here? You want to go over to staking. Yeah, just, yeah, staking. And then you'll see what you what you put in. The history, yeah. Over there on the left, Dwayne. Just down on the left. Oh, right above okay. the exchange staking, right there, yep. Right there, okay. So click on that. And now there's your staking. Mm -hmm. what, you, what you've done at this point was you staked 2,100 of them and then the other ones that you had, you have been playing around with them over in the, uh, in the exchange, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but what, what you could do at this point because you've got those 2100 that are staked at 2.5 percent you could close ahead and the thing is is those have only been staked for what four days five days something like that yeah so it's yeah. not like you're losing a great deal in your, in your interest by by closing that ahead of schedule and then you could you could turn around and stake them you could either stake them if you wanted to stake them all and just lock them all up at 8%. Um, or Let's do you that could right. split them up a little bit. Can we do that right now and show everybody? What's that? Can we do that right now and show everybody? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Close ahead of schedule. Just hit close ahead. Okay, close ahead. And say okay. Okay. Close the head of schedule. There you go. And you, you really didn't, if you, the thing about this, this staking, it's really kind of cool 
because of the fact that if you do have to close ahead of schedule, you know, you're making two and a half percent per month, that's 30% per year. That's a pretty dang good return on investment to start with. And, um, and so, but if you close ahead of schedule, do this now, click on create a staking. Okay. Right there, that blue button, create a staking. Sorry, I had to get rid of my cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, now look at the staking period. Click in that box on the staking period. And hold it there. See right there, it says 1% for one month. You get 1% for staking for one month. You get, the second one is, um, you get, go for three months and you get 1.2%. If you go for six months, you get 1.5. You go for 12 months, you get 1.8. You go 18, you get 2%. If you go 24, you get 2.5%. Now, here's the difference between those first five. Those first five can be unstaked. Like if you, if for some reason you realize, oh man, I need some of this money, you can actually unstake it. And what they do is they just go back to the, like let's say that you staked it for 24 months at 2.5% and then at six months something came up and uh, you know, six into into your, you know, on your way into your seventh month, something comes up, and you need to get some of that money out. What you do is you unstake it, and what they'll do is they'll take it back to the one point five percent. Okay, so if they've been paying you two point five percent during that first six months what they're going to do is remove that money that they've paid you. Those CRUs that they've paid you, they're going to remove that 1% because you didn't stake it for the whole entire time. But you don't lose any of your, your tokens that you staked in the first place. All, you, all that happens is the amount of interest that you make is going to decrease, right? You understand that? So instead of 2.5% for those six months, you're only going to get 1.5%. Right. And, then, and if they've already paid you the 2.5% during those months, they're going to take that back. They're going to take 1% back from you. Right. Okay. And so that's the thing to understand. Now, the, the Eventi 2020 there for 8%, that is locked for three years, and you cannot unlock it. Now, Joe, I, this is one thing I am curious about in that 8% staking. It's, it's a full-scale locked up for for three years it isn't going to be starting to get released at one year a little no, bit definitely not right. definitely not so that's why they're paying scale. so much yeah yeah so that's a full scale three-year investment but you guys if you do the numbers on that you're talking eight percent per month that's 96 percent per year that's ginormous that's return crazy. on investment crazy not to yeah <laughs> What I'm planning on doing, just to give you guys, a, you know, a little bit of a heads up on what I'm planning on doing, is all my unstaked, on, on my unlocked stuff that I have right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take about, I'm gonna take about a third of it out, and uh, or you know, I'm gonna probably take seventy percent of it out and put it into the eight percent, and then I'm gonna leave thirty percent out, uh, you know, in the in the area where I can still go get to it if I need it. But I'm going to take 70% of what I've already got staked, and I'm going to unstake it, and then I'm going to stake it again at 8%, because I want, I want to get 8% on 70% of my, my portfolio. And I'm going so to you, could, you could do that here, um, Dwayne. You could split. You see already you've got available 2,142 CRUs. It says on the top left there. So you could, um, uh, you could split some of that up. So you could put some into the 8%, maybe a thousand, it's up to you, of course, and then some into the 2.5 or whatever. Okay, well, this is a piddly amount and I've got much more coming. So let's just go for the whole thing. So you're gonna buy some more off the exchange? Um, no, I thought you said I have a bill. Yeah, I am gonna eventually buy more. The only time you can stake is with unlocked coins. So the 2,300 you've got in your portfolio, they're locked. 
those are the ones that are locked up and they release one percent per year so we've all got those because that's what we came in buying in no, the first hold place on a second though joe most of what he has most of what he has in his portfolio right there is unlocked because what he did is came in at the fifty dollar package oh okay then he, then he spent the rest of his 260 bucks he, he spent 10 bucks to get into the vip club he spent oh, I see. Right, on right. the vips and then he spent the rest in the exchange. Okay. Got, so you know, you so you're planning. He's going to plan. In, you're planning to buy more on the exchange, Dwayne. Yes. Because today they're twelve cents. You realize. Right now I have four hundred four units. I'm waiting to purchase CRUs with. Okay. Well, I. I mean, I they can only just keep going up. But you know, right now they're twelve cents. The other day, like I said, they were hovering between five seven cents. Um, and they stayed at 10 for a few days. So, I, you know, I guess it's up yeah. to you when you want to buy them. Well, I had it um, set up to buy at 10.9 and it went down mm -hmm. to 10 today. For some reason, it, it didn't go off of my system. I, it didn't, I didn't purchase any. I don't know why, um, but I've had how long, a how long was it up? Yesterday, way oh, over the 24-hour okay. thing. But I have some weird stuff going on right now. I've had to change my uh, my password three times. I got an alert that somebody's trying to get into my my account here, and so was I've that somebody? Was that uh, we we do our uh, put it this way? We've got other people's passwords when we're helping them in their back office, and um, they always get an email alert to say somebody is using your back office. That's very common. I, do, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. So yeah. if JJ was looking in your back office. I haven't, or, I haven't been, okay. I haven't been doing any of that. I don't have. But if, if you're, computer. if you're logging in on another computer or a phone or you're in someone else's house, looking in your own back office, you'll get an alert because it's, it's just basically they're picking up that somebody else is using another um, what do you call it? IP server. Right. That's yeah. That's I got that alert. And then also my password was defunct. I couldn't get on. So I had, had a request my new password and all that stuff. It was, it's just kind of been a chaos for the last 24 hours. Oh, fair enough. So. I know what that feels like. <laughs> so do, what do you want to do? You want to go ahead and uh, state this for 8%? Which you've got. Yeah, that's the thing to remember yeah. about this, Dwayne, is once you hit that confirm button right there, it's a done deal for 36 months. Right. Can't back out of this. So okay, so if I'm available to... 2142 mm -hmm. out of the 2309, but that's all I have. So uh, let's make it happen. Um, I guess I got to hit that agree thing first. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so look at that right there. Look at that, Dwayne. 6,168.96 CRUs that you will get. If Out of having 21. Right. You're, mm -hmm. you're putting in 2142 and they're going to, and that's going to give you an additional 6,168.96. So Quick by the time the staking's done, you'll have just from this one thing, you'll have, you know, 9,000 CRUs. And that's as talk, Dwayne, that... Um... No, no, no. I'm not going to have 9,000. I'm going to have six. Yeah, yeah, because that's going to be reduced in his portfolio. Yeah, that's what it's telling you oh, right there. As a result of your staking, your account will receive that number of CRUs over the next three years. Yeah, it's not immediate. Right. And right. That's, that's, that's going to be yeah. the money because those things are going to be worth a lot of money or... Three years from now, these things are going to be worth a ton of money, you guys. They're going to be worth a ton of money. And it's just going to keep growing from there because of the way this thing's set up. It's, it's absolutely crazy. And 96% per year, that's pretty dang good money on your investment. That's pretty good ROI right there, kids. So hit confirm if you're going to, otherwise the page will crash. <laughs> so now go to your list of stakings right there. And it shows you what you got going on. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you go to the portfolio, okay. just hit the portfolio in the middle, and then when you just scroll down, you'll see. So you've got no more unblocked CIUs because they're staked. And um, if you need any more unblocked CIU, you have to purchase them on the exchange. Yes. Now that exchange will be gone when we go live. It's going to be overtaken by the big boy stuff. And oh, this, good to know. Thank you. Another well, this what we're doing now is like this is like kids stuff right now. They reckon um, the lady who's in charge of our blockchain, Maria, she said this is like you know sandpit games for kids. When we get out there in the real world, some of these guys are going to be investing in the millions, not in the cents. So you know, welcome to the real world. And we have no idea what's going to happen to it. We're just going to have to keep our eyes open and, and um, yeah, take it as it comes, really. So, Dwayne, there, your, your main wallet, though, in your CRU tab, those, that 404.48, that, that is essentially, you know, potentially unblocked CRUs right there because you can take that money and you can go buy more unlocked CRUs. Yes. So that's money that you can spend that's in that main wallet right there. And yes. so that's basically what you want to do is, is, you know, do whatever you're going to do with that. But try to remember the, 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 uh, the rule of try to keep 30% of your money liquid and 70% of it invested. And that's, that's what I'm going to try to do is with all mine, I'm going to do that with mine. I'm going to do that with my wife's. And, um, you know, I've got a couple of stakings that I've actually been paid money on. And I'm going to keep those where they are in the 2.5 because I don't want to lose that money that I've already made. But I'm going to go ahead and unstake 70% of my stakings. And I'm going to take that 70% and throw it right back in at the 8%. And I'm going to leave the other 30% where it's at so that I can, so that I can, you know, use it if I need to, for some reason. And I'm going to now, do one thing to, one thing to understand on the exchange right now, they're sort of hovering around the 12 cent mark. Um, we had a guy last night who was asking about putting 10,000 in and, um, you know, I couldn't, you know, say to him, you know, that he has to go through the EIPs and buy locked CRU um, when he could get double the amount on the exchange. So he's decided that he's actually going to be um, putting, sorry, Carola. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought she had a question. Um, like no, she looks like she's excited oh. about something. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so anyway, so, We've sort of broken it down that um, he now realizes that he's not going to be able to stake some of it because he was actually going to put in um, some of it into an uh, installment packages. But last night he said, well, if he was to buy $1,000 outright, $1,000 on EIPS would have got him, uh, what was it? I can't remember I, I wrote it down. Hey, 5000 CRUs. Now, if he went on the exchange at 10 cents, which it's not anymore, um, he'd get 10,000 CRUs. So um, I basically people need to understand as the CRU is going up, if it continues to go up and to go up, then, you know, you may want a better deal buying bulk in the packages through the EIPS and getting more of the, um, the training but they will be locked. So again, that's the beauty of buying the unlocked coins on the exchange. So you just have to keep an eye on the exchange and what the prices are as of, you know, every day really. Now, I think Marilyn was talking about yesterday having problems doing the training because she couldn't, um, couldn't see the words or something. Was that Marilyn? It was, it was done in a different language, probably Russian. And I did not know that, that you can change the language on it. I know. No, I'll just bring up my screen. So I'll share the screen. Um, OK. 
can I? There you go. Um, if, if all of you know this, but um, you can change in YouTube the settings to play video slower and in the right language. Uh, it was going by too fast. You know, teleprompter was just going by too fast, and it's like, come on, slow it down. But I didn't know that you could do all that. Oh, you you log it. You you do it yourself. Yeah. Well, I, you're you're showing us your stuff. Okay. Right, um, so we're going to education. Okay, we'll hit the eight rules of a private investor. I did. Okay. Now, um, just move this page out of the way. So I'll hit play just so that you can see what I mean. Right, naturally it's gonna be in Russian because Andre doesn't speak English. Now those that have been translated by Andrew Hawkes, um, there's only so many that have been done, but um, in the YouTube setting button here, can you see that settings? So you hit that and you got playback speed and you just bring up the page and it says normal. So you can change it to, you know, slower, faster, normal. There's four options. Uh, it's probably more actually, if I scroll that down. Yeah, there's more. So you can speed it up and slow it down depending on, you know, how quick a person reads really. <laughs> now that's just the speed. You can also change the um, subtitles. And in this case, it's already on English. And you can see the Chinese, Czechoslovakian. Oops, hang on. Where are we? Um, subtitles on Czechs now. Okay, okay, I'll put it back in English. Um, but yeah, if you drop down the... Um, uh, where is it? Subtitles. And you go into options. Me. Then it gives you a lot more choices, like you can change the font size. So um, when you, um, you know, if you're a little bit blind like me, <laughs> you can change it up to 200, all right? And then we'll play it and see if it's done that. So now, can you see Academy of a Private Investor, the eight rules of a private investor? Can you see that now? Yeah. So it's much bigger so you can follow it so yeah so those are he's very young here <laughs> this is quite old because <laughs> he looks a lot older now wow he is young he's just time. chicken in that video yeah yeah <laughs> so you can see how easy it makes it when you know when the font i mean I, that's not even the full size of the font you don't even have to look at his face if you wanted to make the font even bigger um, then you just go, so you go into subtitles, you go into options, font size. Um, I could go 400%, and there it is. Oops. Okay, where'd it go? Um, right. So that's how you see the font, and then slow it down or speed it up depending on. Um, how you know quick you can read so mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier when you're you know trying to sort of take notes at the same time if you take notes you know at the same time so that's that really um Wish there's we tons <laughs> you know well there are some that are in um uh in let me just think if i go back into education there's ones here on the right left hand side rather than these that are in here, which are some of them are in English. Where did I go? You'll eventually get them all put into English. 
it just takes time and manpower and you know so I'm looking okay. forward to the time when they're into English so that I can listen to them while I'm driving down the road and things like that. Mm. But for now, you got to take the time to sit down yeah. and read the subtitles. Go back to the real world, right? <laughs> yeah. But I know but it's very to... basic stuff, a lot of it. You know, when you think that I've always said this, that if our children did this at school and left school instead of like saving their money in a money jar they learnt how to invest they would be a lot better off and um but no one's teaching them that because the parents don't know and that you know we all live on debt and we all want the best houses and the best cars and all these other things that because the attraction is there or they want to impress their neighbors or the society is so crazy how it works and it's designed for us to keep going to get more borrowed money, borrowed money from the bank, borrowed money from organizations that charge you 7% or even worse in many cases. And so we're not teaching our kids how to deal with money right from word go. And my son is 22 and he's, he's trying to become an artist. He's, quit university after a year and he's wanted to follow his passion and we're all for that because we see so many people that are miserable and they do their job for 25 years the same old same old every Monday morning and they hate it and so they get home at the weekends they get drunk they just get sick of life and then they go back and do it all again and nothing changes they're on this treadmill and we said to him you've got to you can do this now and he's looking at going to London next year and knocking on the door of a particular uh, artists um, exhibitor and seeing if they'll take him on and you know he's he's done all his own personal training he buys training packages online of how to develop himself he reads books he doesn't watch tv he follows all the skills that we have taught him over life and he is you know taking charge of his own future and that's unbelievable you know and his sister's gone down the university road she's a teacher she hates it She's 24. She's got her own house. She's up to her neck in debt, student debt, da, 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 da. So we've got portfolios for the two of them set up in our system as well. And um, we're trying to sort of help them on their, on their way too. And, and Elliot's actually got lots and lots of friends and all they do is drink, smoke marijuana and hang out, university students. Yeah. And he's had to move right away from all of those. He's had to because that's the only way he's going to get where he wants to go. Mm -hmm. And he's finally found one guy who's from Kuwait. His parents moved over here when he was a kid. And he has been, he's 24. He's been trading on Forex for four years. He's lost money. He's earned money. And he's now finally getting it. And he's trained himself to do this. And I think, well, good on you. He hasn't got a car. His first car is going to be a Maserati. Oh. <laughs> and he's got goals. So if you don't have goals and you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Exactly. Exactly. You've got, you've got nowhere to go. Yeah. You're just going to go around like a fly with one wing. And so, yeah. you know, I see it in our kids and I think, why can't other kids be like this? But I think it's their environment. It's how they, they've been, you know, trained out of them at school. Yeah. Not to think. It's the generations then, of microwave wanting. Yeah. yeah. But we're all here because we're not happy with our financial situation. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that can change that is for us to learn and to make changes. And, you know, it's not going to fall out of the sky. <laughs> only wish. But um, <laughs> no. so it takes work and it takes, you know, time and dedication. Barry and I work seven days a week. We, we, haven't, we haven't had time off. Oh, I can't remember the last time. And it's, it's just ongoing. And for us, we've got places like Australia that open up when we're trying to go to bed. And like last night, 11, 12 o'clock at night, we're still dealing with people in Australia because to them, it's only seven, eight o'clock at night. And so you've got to be fairly flexible in this if you want to grow a business and get people sort of going. And when people start to see that it's not just about themselves, it's about the bigger picture, that's when it starts to come back because, you know, you're actually helping people in your organization um, to get somewhere. 
and you know i i think it's quite sad that we've got quite a lot of old people in our organization including ourselves because um our parents haven't trained us to do to think outside the square it's like well as soon as you're old enough you go to school and then as soon as you're you know old enough you're out of the house and you you're out there doing it and uh, life's a constant treadmill when that happens so anyway so anyone anyone have any questions tammy have you um are you there Is tammy actually in your business jj yes She may not be there. So Here a anyway. second. I have mute going. Say again, Dwayne. I was gonna say, give her a second because she might figure out how to unmute mute herself. Okay. But I guess not. No, she's probably busy. Okay. Well, we're uh, we're kind of struggling here. I do have a question about um, purchasing. Uh, CRUs and stuff and that um, if you don't mind I'll go back to my page so I can show you what I'm talking about when you're buying CRUs or selling CRUs you got two different uh, scales on there and I'm not exactly sure what all that means so I'm going it's to probably likely to be the average of what you're gonna get and what you're gonna purchase for no what, what I'm talking about is a, it says uh, amount of CRU and total units. I don't don't know what that means. Like right now, okay, I just shared my screen. Yeah, um, it shows the uh, toppers at twelve because that's what it's selling at. Yeah, twelve cents. Yep. Let's see on there. It doesn't show. I have to go down to first. But twelve is the top right now. Yeah. So amount of CRUs, total units what are those that's probably the amount that are trading currently right so there's that are in, in, there's that 40, are unlocked in the system. there's 41 million people trying to buy at 12 percent uh no there's not that many people in our system so um that's the amount of cru so that's probably the amount of unlocked cru's that are around yeah i'll oh, say so yeah that's right there's 41 million CRUs that people are trying to buy right now. 12 cents, probably. Yeah. So there's probably more buyers than there are sellers, which is great because, you know, that puts more demand on the price. That's why it's going up. When there's more sellers than buyers, then we've got problems because, you know, the price is going to plummet because uh, there's too many out on the market all at once. And hence why they brought this 8% lockup deal in. One of the reasons, one is, you know, because we get a really good deal from it, but two, it stops all these coins from making the market crash when we go live. Because what we want to do is to encourage these big investor um, companies and, and traders to see that it's actually going to continue going up. And there will be, huge fluctuations to start with until it all starts to settle down but um yes there are more people wanting you know to um sell because they've got lots and lots of coins so but there's also lots of people that want to buy them because they know that 12 cents is still dirt cheap yeah so what is the total units there's forty nine thousand total units right now Do that you is Dwayne, that's if you go up there into your portfolio and look at your main wallet, you just scroll all the way up, you'll see it. But that is in that 404.48, that's in units. Oh, uh, okay. That's, that's dollars, US that, dollars, yeah, US dollars, unit dollars. Basically dollars. They call yeah. it a unit dollars. Don't get that confused with UNTB. I know, I know it, can, it can look a bit confusing because UNTB, is unit token blockchain, but that doesn't exist right now at all until October the 1st. Okay, so let me so, see if I have this right now. There's a, a 41 million CRUs that people wanna buy at 12, and that mm -hmm. equals $49,000. Yeah, probably that's yeah. what it does. Get a calculator, right? it probably does. Yeah. 498,000. 
Yeah, sorry, four hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. So there okay. could be, you know, as as the next few days go on, you know, you may find um, it's going to be harder to buy them at that price unless yeah. they start dropping down again. But I don't know if they will somehow. I don't think so. They're go just going up, right? Hmm. Yeah, I knew I knew it would happen eventually. Yeah, but that's only a three-day trend. Once the slowdown, though, of people that are selling, once they start to see this 8% deal, they might wake up <laughs> and think, well, that's a silly thing to do. We may as well lock them up and get a heck of a lot more, too. Very true. Good point. But this trading part will be up on the open market, too, right? So we could play with the that, 8%. too, right? No, I mean, I mean the trading, trading part. This part? Yeah. It'll be on the main exchange. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be in our back office anymore. It'll be out on the main external uh, exchange. It won't be not in our- Not that I'm aware, but who knows? I mean, things change- Quickly, right? Almost every week by this, this company. Almost so, every day. <laughs> no, not yeah. that day, but- <laughs> Now, one, one, thing to be, one thing to be aware of that um, this is ongoing. This isn't just about the CRU program. The CRU program is reaching its point of their roadmap, which they've had, you know, in place and planned and they've executed the time scale throughout, you know, the launch of the CRU program, crypto unit program since 2000, March 2019. And of course, going on the market and the exchange is, you know, the excellent way to, to sort of not finish it just start the whole thing um and it's gone through stages each time but this this isn't just the first thing that they're going to be launching well it's not the first thing they've launched they've already done the um the uh, string rail project but the next couple of projects are going to be equally as exciting and we don't know exactly what they are yet but they will be announced during eventy which the times for Eventi are going to be, uh, I don't know the exact times, but they're the first and second and third of October. Now this is the, what would have been the Russian anniversary, fifth anniversary, and everyone was gonna go to Russia and have the big sort of, you know, Yahoo thing. <laughs> However, because of lockdown, they've had to bring it forward and do it online. And so they're still busy doing recordings all over the world with some of the leaders um, and they will be launching something else. And it could be anything to do with shares within the gold mining era area that they've got and offering shares maybe to the Basalt company that they're getting set up in Poland and they want to get it set up in India. So yeah, just watch the space for that information when it comes out. So um Callie, she's here. We've, you've missed um, most of it. So <laughs> you said that you had some questions yesterday. Oops. Yeah, I do. Um, the steps to take for um, getting my, what I can do with what I have um, to get to the, ne get the next thing. Um, um, Shoot, <laughs> I left off from um, when I was, it, it started off with the, about the CRU. Uh, when we had that, uh, that meeting Sunday and um, there was, there was talk about the, um, I guess there was something that was being brought up so I guess you guys probably already went through some of that. Was this the closed webinar you're talking about? Yes. You didn't go on that. You weren't you weren't on that, obviously. I did go to that on Sunday. I did I did attend that. I don't know how you would have got an invite because you have to be a consultant to get the invite. That was, was that the same one we're talking about? That's okay. I was on the Sunday evening. I was on the Sunday evening call. That was the American one, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, the closed one is um, the company's 
sort of corporate call. I thought that's what you meant. Uh -oh. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, we've sort of gone over it, but that doesn't really apply to you, Kelly, because the 8% that they've just offered is for people that have got unlocked CIU that they've purchased on the exchange, which so you can purchase today if you wanted to. But that's a separate thing altogether. What, what your CRU, what will happen is that the CRU that you've got now is still locked up for three years. And after the first year, 1% gets unlocked and you can either spend it, you know, or reinvest it back into the system. Um, and that's the same, that nothing has changed there. Now, when we go on to the exchange, same with Marilyn, you can stake your CIU. I would be highly advisable to do that because you're going to get dividends off your initial investment. If you leave it in your back office, nothing's going to happen to it. It's just going to sit there. It's going to grow in value over time, over years. But why wouldn't you stake it so that you get what's called the UNTB, which is the unit token blockchain trading coin, and then you get dividends on the amount of CIU that you've invested. So, are so we going to get a notice? Are we going to get a notice when they're able to be staked? Um, yeah, first of October when we launch on the open market, that will be in your back office. Okay. So everybody's going to want to be paying close attention come the first of October. You're going to want to be zoomed in and dialed into your into your back office looking for emails and the second that it goes live and your uh your stuff is open you're going to immediately want to go um you're going to want to go immediately and and stake it that's what i'm going to do with all my unlock because i've got a bunch of unlocked stuff too and as soon as that comes out i'm going to go stake it for the eight percent that's part of the reason why i'm going to keep some of my unlocked stuff. Um, but you don't want to stake where it's all, at. JJ. What's up? You don't want to stake them all, right? So keep them unlocked. Right, Joe? Well, I'm gonna... um, Yeah, if you want to keep them in the 2% so that they, you know, come available in two years, not three years, it's entirely up to you, you know, what you want to do. And I'm going to split them all up into small increments in that instead of well with whatever i'm going to put in for eight percent i'm just going to keep that in one large amount and then everything else that i'm going to stake for 2.5 i'm going to keep that in smaller amounts so that if for some reason i need it i can unstake it and uh and i don't lose the whole yeah. large amount like i mean everyone's circumstances are going to be different some some might need more money to live on on a regular basis Others may, you know, so they may stake for one month. Um, others may just say, look, I just want to lock it up and forget about it. <laughs> and I know what my returns are going to be. And it's a safer option, like any long, long, longer term, you know, investment, really. And in I any of other cases, like Marilyn and uh, Kelly, Tammy, probably, and Ryan, you may not even have any unlocked coins. So it makes no difference to you. I have a question. Ryan might have. Sorry? I said Ryan might have. Who knows? Okay. Well, the thing is, you guys, is once, once we go to the open market, all of your locked up coins are going to get unlocked, and you'll be able to stake them if you want to. And my suggestion, I know that I'm going to go, I'm going to go stake them. I'm going I'm to put them in in smaller amounts and that kind of thing. I'm not going to stake them all. But because I want to leave a little bit to play around with on the on the exchange. Um, when when we go to the market, JJ, they don't become unlocked. I think that's why people are getting really confused with this. They just become available oh, to be staked. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like right now, right now, your your initial investment that you came in and purchased EIPS, you can't you can't stake those because they're not unlocked. So they just continue on, but they can be staked. And it's just that they're on the exchange instead of being in the back office. But the unlocked one, we could play around with those, right? On the If you keep market. them out, yeah, if you keep them out of the unstaking, if you keep mm -hmm. them unstaked, yeah. Okay. Or you put them on a short-term stake, you know? Mm -hmm. With the ones that are 
going to be available, we can divide those up, the stake or what? You haven't got any, Marilyn. Yours won't become I know, available I know. until October first, right? No, 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 no. no your only initial investment, no. your initial investment, Marilyn, won't be available for a year after you've signed up. One percent, one percent gets unlocked every month over a three-year period. Oh. That's it. But so the word was the word from the meeting the other day was that it would that on October first all of our all of our locked up units are going to be unlocked for staking purposes. Is that correct? Well, it's it's probably just the terminology because it sounds like you can then stake some and you've got some unlocked. Just supposing, like we've got three hundred thousand CIUs, okay. Uh, most of them are locked because we've we've bought them and they're bonuses. Bonuses are actually locked up for a, a little bit longer that you gain through the system as well. So we can't we can't do anything with those coins. We have to stake them. They're not unlocked. They never will be unlocked until the first year comes around. Okay. It's just that we're allowed to stake them. What I have in my portfolio to, this, is, this is the question though. This is the thing that we need to get cleared away right here, right now. Yeah. Once they are stakeable, because they're right now they're not even stakeable. They're locked no, up. They're Can't locked up. But no. once once October first comes or whenever, as soon as we go live to the marketplace, the word is that they will become stakeable. Yes. They're not going to be unlocked, per se, as far as being able to just go do whatever you want with them, but you will be able to go and stake them for 2.5%, yes. or you'll be able to go and stake them for 8%, and you'd be literally half crazy not to. No, 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 no. You can't stake those, JJ. The only ones you can stake for the 1% to 2.5% and the 8% are unlocked coins. Well, that's not what Andre said the other day. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Otherwise, everybody would be like jumping in with like their millions of coins. You, I'll have to start again. Okay. Look at look at the back office news. Okay, that they sent out. I put it up on the entrepreneur site yesterday. The latest news about the eight percent. You can only stake unlocked coins on the eight percent now your initial investment or whatever you paid in some people bought fifty dollars you know some people bought thousands they're locked they're locked up for the first year yeah same with you marilyn marilyn yeah. you don't have any unlocked coins unless you buy them off the exchange okay. internally right now so don't worry about it okay okay Okay. When, when they go to the exchange on the 1st of October, all our coins, all of them, the ones that are currently staked on 2.5, all of them can be staked against the UNTB or with the UNTB. But they're not unlocked. Do you, you, can, you, get just get UN, you can get UNTBs from them. Yeah. That you means... Being right. So my my twenty one thousand seven, you know, seven hundred and sixty four yeah. coins. I'll be able to stake them for UNTBs. All of yeah. them. Yeah. And that's the same thing everybody else will be able to do. You won't be able to go stake them for eight percent or for no. two and a half percent, but no. you'll be able to go transfer them over into UNTBs. And you're not really transferring them over. You're just by staking them for UNTBs, you still have your CRUs, but you also get your UNTBs. Mm -hmm. And your coins still remain staked or locked up for- but Put it this way, if we didn't have an internal exchange right now, none of us, not one single one of us would have unlocked coins. Mm -hmm. right. None of us. They're locked until the first year rolls over. Oh, okay, all right. But because they opened up the internal exchange, they gave us the ability to come in and be able to buy unlocked coins. And that's a wonderful thing. I mean, it's 
it's kind of a double edged sword, but it's we we were told that um, only those with unlocked coins that have been in the system for over one year, okay, and many have, will be able to stake on the open exchange. The rest of us, we won't be able to. Now they thought, well, that's not fair because that puts us that didn't know about this or didn't get in early at a disadvantage. So they've allowed all of us to go to the exchange and stake against with the UNTB. And we don't have to have unlocked coins to do that. Right. And, and they're still not unlocked. <laughs> they're, they're, they're locked up. Right. So I can't touch mine until for a year. I can't do Yeah, that. same. That's always been like that, Marilyn. Nothing's changed there. Okay. But if you don't if you don't stake them when we go live, all that's going to happen is that your CRU is just going to sit there, mm. and you don't make any bonuses. So why so would you do that? To stake them as soon as we go live. Yeah, you're going to. So that's what gonna, everyone's doing. Okay. You're gonna stake them for the UNTBs. For every thousand CRUs you have, you're going to be able to get forty UNTBs at this point. That's what the. That's what the you know, all the projections are, it could actually go higher. And I would imagine maybe it could even go lower. But at this point, it's, it's scheduled to be 40 for every 1000. And let me give you a, let me give you an example here. Just let's do a little math. So everybody can understand what's going on here. Um, if you have, let's say that you have 750 CRUs. Because I, I don't know how many you have, but I have 18. 18. Keep the math e easy, JJ. I could say a thousand, one hundred. Well, the reason why I want to do this is because I want to show people that if you don't have a thousand, you can still do it. You don't need a thousand to be able to stake them for the UNTBs. So people that haven't been able to put in enough money to be able to get over a thousand, they might be thinking, well, if I don't have a thousand, I can't do it. But that's yeah. not the case. It's just whatever you've got. If you've got 750, you divide that by 1,000, and that's 0.75. And then you multiply that times 40. That gives you 30. That gives you 30 UNTBs. Mm -hmm. And the thing about these UNTBs is these are what are going on to the marketplace that are going to be the thing that's going to be getting traded when we go on to the market. And if, you know, let's just, let's just uh, play around and, and be excited a little bit. Let's say that, say by Christmas time, they're worth five bucks each Ooh. times five. That's $150 a month. That's 150 units a month. And this is where I have a question now, Joe, because this is the part where I'm confused is these UNTBs right here, these 150 UNTBs, where do they go? And how do we, you know, let's say somebody needs the money, can they spend it? Is this money that's spendable? Where does it go? Um, you know, how does the UNTB work? Is that actually money in our pockets or is that money yeah. that's still locked up? No, it, you, it goes into your other coin that we get when we launch, which I showed. I'll bring it up if I can share my screen. Um, so there's going to probably be another tab and it's going to be the UNTB tab or something like that, huh? I have no idea. I don't okay. know. You will see the USDU. This is for, this is called a stable coin and it's like an internal wallet and everything goes into here. Overrides div dividends bonuses will be accrued in USDU. Okay. Now you can take that out once you've got the ability to do that, which means um, you've got to have a crypto wallet, crypto card wallet in order for you to um, download the money. Now I believe that you would have to sell the UNTB. So um, again, that's not going to be very hard to do because they are going to be in demand. And so um, are we going to get those as a, like a credit card kind of thing? No, this is just to show you what they look like. Um, then you have to have a cryptocurrency card. In our case, we've got the 10X, um, 10X card, which is like a cryptocurrency card that we load money into 
into um, new and we can also load money out of onto the card, which is, we did that recently. And then you can use that at the ATM or you can like in, I know the guys that have had their cards a while, they have bought petrol, they've used it in a coffee shops and different places that they've been to. So um, I've heard that they will be, uh, well, we've heard on a few calls that they're looking at having a card system for all of us so we can trade in and out with. So it's going to be all an internal system, which would be great for everybody. Yeah. Because that right now, um, well, I shouldn't say too much because it was on the closed call, but they've, they've done dealings with a certain bank around the world. And, um, and this is where it's going to give us a lot more power so we can give more to the members that are involved in the VIP club access to that. Yeah. Just like the traders. Sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Oh, the traders, they'll be trading in and out with their coins. So if they've got Bitcoin in their wallets, they'll be trading their money in to buy CIU uh, or UNTB rather, and then trading out again. So it's just a different system, Marilyn. We've got to embrace. Mm -hmm, I know. Not dealing with dollars and cents and notes paper money um this is a very different system so yeah hence why the more untb um you know it, it's, it's actually hard to fathom how much certain people are going to be earning in this and we know i know i've seen their figures you know five hundred thousand dollars a month might seem outrageous as a bonus as a dividend while their asset of their CIU is growing and growing, and growing, mm -hmm. that's not going to be uncommon. Yeah. And so we're talking like people that are very, very, uh, I wouldn't say ignorant, but certainly not very knowledgeable in the finance world. These are people right. that just came in very early and they snapped up some really cheap coins and they need education on what they're going to do with it. Because we all know that people that win lotto, it's like, boom, you know, and then it's like gone. a few years later, it's gone. So they don't know what to do with it. So that's why they were saying on this call the other day that people need to set up their own foundations, which is a much better way of avoiding tax in the bigger mm -hmm. picture, not giving their money to foundations but to set up their own legal foundations because there's so many loopholes there for tax reasons. Mm -hmm. And if you get to that point in life, you would have to get the right, you know, information through lawyers and accountants so mm -hmm. that you don't uh, get messed around with, um, with that sort of money. I'm going to set um, up the calm foundation. I, and I'm going with wellness for health and hydration. <laughs> but so, so Kelly, you had a question, did you say? Oh, where are you in the chat? Uh, yes, I do have some questions. Um, okay. I first of all, where is the uh, the plant that you speak of um, located in the in our um, in our in our back? Is it is it in the is it in the wallet or where is it at? What's that? What what were you looking at? The coins. When you say your coins, your CIUs, the crypto units. The they CRU. should be in your portfolio, in okay. the CRU tab portfolio. Hey guys, oh, I got to go right okay. now. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I'll get back to you, JJ. But uh, just for us, you guys know that uh, I live in Oregon right now, and we have wow. these wildfires. Yeah. This is all about Antifa and Black Lives Matter. They, yep. They're burning our, our country down. They just busted eight people. Um, Good. For, yeah, this is all Antifa and uh, George Soros. Yeah, our sheriff is in trouble right now. I I gotta okay. go, and I will see you guys uh, in the next day or two. Okay. Good luck. Take care there. Thank you. All right, brother. We'll see. With you your soon. country, you. with your state, and everybody there. Thank you. Oh Lord, be with them. Insanity. So Kelly, so Kelly, you're saying that you don't know what where your portfolio is, or you don't know where your oh, crypto no. units. I, I know where the portfolio is. Um, actually, um, it brings me to many other questions. Um, so I'm in my back uh, where I'm in the CRU area where under the uh, portfolio, and um, 
I see that I have uh, some in there, um, and I'd like to be able to to use some of it to be able to get my next uh, CRU because I don't I don't have other funds that I can bring in anything else. And the other question I was wondering about: What do we do with the the um, the one fifty that's gifts and promotions, or that just stays on the list? Yeah, that stays within your portfolio. Okay. And all, all these CIUs are not um, available to um, become unlocked for the first year. Oh, so I can't use anything that I, anything in here then. Um, all right, so I can't no. buy anything. What you, no, can you have do though, Callie, what you can do with what you've got in there, whatever you've got in your portfolio, come the 1st of October, or as soon as we go live, what you will be able to do is you will be able to go stake those against the UNTB. And for every 1,000 that you have, for every 1,000 CRUs that you have, you will get 40 UNTBs. That's what we were just, what I was just showing a minute ago. If you've got 750 of them, then you end up with 30 UNTBs. If you've got 500 of them, you end up with whatever you have. However many you have, you want going to want to go stake them against the UNTB because even if you only end up getting five or ten or twenty or whatever UNTBs, those UNTBs are going to grow like a weed because there's only eight million or eight billion of them for the whole entire world, and they're going to be they're going to be raising in price really fast, and because of what they're backed by and also what's going on with all of the world governments and all the money that they're creating. And, and so this kind of thing is gonna rise in value really, really fast. And so once they open up, once they're available for you to stake them against the UNTB, you're gonna to wanna to go do that. You're gonna to wanna to get your UNTBs because that UNTB will pay you money every month. It might not be a whole bunch of money right out of the chute, but it's kind of like if, if you bought 10 Bitcoin clear back in 2010, you had 10 Bitcoin, they're worth $10,000 each. So right now you'd be 10, you'd be 10 times 10,000. That's a hundred thousand bucks. If you had 10 of them and you know, so just right now, yeah, you, you, this whole thing, when you, got into this you knew that everything was staked up for or locked up for three years and at, at, at one year it starts opening up at one percent per month for the first okay. few months or whatever and by the time three years gets here it'll all be opened up and you'll be able to do whatever you want with it but that's the whole point it, and that's that's done for a reason and it's so that we don't have the the buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell of the the roller coaster that is all of the cryptocurrencies that are out there. They're all just the thing, roller coasters. Thing is, Kelly, the other thing is that um, you actually didn't purchase CRUs. You actually purchased education. And you got gifted the CRUs, which is probably worth, well, not more than the education in Andre's opinion, but certainly it's going to help people. Now, if you can tie the two together, you'll understand how much value that CIU that you've got right now will have. That why would you sell it? Nobody's selling. Nobody that understands the education in this company wants to sell their CIU. So just give if anything they want to buy more. The trainings and that they use, they use trainings right now to be getting trainers. What was that? I wanted to go through the, the, the first one today. I started to go through the the U the U U G U gain trainings. I started to do that this morning. I would do the um, I would start, Kelly. I I wouldn't. I would start with the education in the portfolio that you've purchased in the education box. So if you go into your back office, and you hit education. All right. Did and then you you'll see. Portfolio. The eight rules of a private investor and all the other trainings that follow on from there. Oh, that show up on the side. Um, yeah. 
Oh, or down underneath. Oh, my portfolio and certificates, current exchange, staking. No, no, no. Go into, go into. Share your screen, Callie. So that go into the education box. All right. Let me let me let me clear it up. Okay, so this is where I'm at. You see the education box on the top right hand? Yeah. Okay, so after getting to the portfolio, then the education. All right. And then scroll down here. Here we are. So you've got the eight rules of a private investor. When you click on these, I've already done this in the training today earlier. Show um, anywhere that I've completed it because this is particular one I've gone through. Right. Okay. We'll just continue on with that. Okay. All right. And after I go to that, then I go back and basically it's these here. Yeah. Now, just, just because you missed the first part of the training today, just hit the financial freedom, financial independence link and get the video to play. Okay. Oh, nice. It just pops open. Okay, okay now just play it so that um, I'll show you what to do to change the settings. Okay. Now you see that um, you might want to just turn it down for now, but um, can you see the, there's a little button there on the middle right hand side. Oops. Oops. See there between the YouTube. Let me, let me see. Uh, let me turn it down here. Yeah. Okay. Right, it looks like you've got it sorted. Now you see that um, button there, that um, the grey one, that's it. Hit that. Now that's how you change, yeah. So when you hit that, yeah. It'll tell you how to change the subtitles. You've got it already in English, that should be fairly standard. And so if you hit the subtitles, English. Um, where do I go? Over here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And then oh. go up to options on the top, right? Options. options. options top right. Now, you can change the size of the font. Okay, so if you scroll down the page, you should be able to change the speed oh, of okay. how it's playing. So you could you can change it to slow it down. So you can um, you have to play around with the settings there. But um, so what the thing is, and if you oh, go back to the go back to the settings, it'll show you that you can slow it down or speed it up depending on how quick you can read. Basically, so you see the playback speed normal. So if you hit that. Oh, I see. And then you can change it. You can slow it right down. Oh, nice. or if you scroll down, you'll be able to speed it up. Okay. Which makes it a lot easier to read for some people if they're taking notes oh, and things. Yeah, so that's, I was wondering where to go to do that. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. That's the same on all the YouTube channels that you watch. Okay, on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. okay, so that's that. So. So I think we've sort of come to an end. I, I can't you, think unless you, anyone got Thank any questions. You. Thank you. That was so good. There should be more on here, unfortunately, because there's quite a few people involved. But if you guys are able to share this information with your own team members, then everybody's sort of up to date. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit messy come the 1st of October. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, now I'm going to go listen to my videos definitely okay well it's quarter to uh, two so i don't know where jj's gone but um i'm really probably gonna have to leave you guys because you've okay. got a business presentation haven't you later all right i'll just this that's mine mm -hmm. so i'm gonna have to leave jj so you guys have got another presentation of you yeah i'm gonna be I don't know, I, Michael, we were going to do another presentation for him, uh, but he had something come up. So I'll reach out to him and find out what the deal is and see whether whether he's going to be able to make it in. But 
it's going but to be from tough. here what what have you got you got probably another 80 odd people that we need to make sure that they're up to date on this information so right and i've got I this don't... recorded so we'll be able to get it out to everybody and they can watch it to be able to learn what they need where are you keeping those at jj when you record these where do we find it um i'll need to get it out to you i'll, I'll get it out to you it, it gets thank you guys so much on, it gets recorded on zoom and then uh and then i need to once i get the email saying that it's been recorded i'll take that and throw it over in and then i'll because i i don't take these and put them up on the con family uh no. channel i just no. keep them I'm keeping them separate from that. So I'll just keep them over in an email and, and then I'll just send you the link with the password because there's a password to them mm -hmm. until you put them up on YouTube. Once they're on YouTube, then they, or, or anywhere else, then they're, they're all good to go without a password. But so I'll so you, just, you're up to date, aren't you, Carola, for your team, for your guys, you know, you know, what's going on. Yeah. To share the information. Yeah. So it's just a case of some of the ones that aren't on here that um, need to know. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they'll be scrambling come the 1st of October, not having a clue what to do, or they'll just yeah. get left behind, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, what yeah. uh, that's what I wanted to do, to focus the next two weeks on this project here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. This is going to be, these two weeks are going to be so huge for people that can take advantage of it. They're going to they're going to have their lives changed forever. You know, if you well, just for, for most of the people that have got their locked up CRU, there's literally nothing, nothing to do. You just have to sit and wait. If you're not going to build the business and introduce others, and you're not going to buy unlock coins off the exchange, then you just sit with your investment the way it is. It's no sweat, nothing to worry about. Well, well, there is the one aspect of it that you want to, you know, whatever locked coins you got, you want to stake them into UNTBs on the first yeah. when you have the ability to do it. That's the only thing you really need to worry about and yeah. is getting that done and getting it done like stat, right? right after you can't do it for everybody. People have to at least listen to the calls, realize what's going on, pay attention because like they say, that... The amount of people that aren't paying attention will depend on how much the UNTB goes for. Yeah. And the least amount of people that bother, the more it's going to be for everybody else that does bother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, I mean, that's the way it is in life. If people would prefer to just turn the TV on and switch off, they miss the boat. Yeah. You know? Amen. Amen. That's a dang good point, Joe. I mean, mm -hmm. if people aren't going to help help themselves. I mean, right. I've got a rule. I don't help people who won't help themselves. And yeah. and I've broken that rule a few times throughout my life. And I every time I've done that, it's always ended up being a problem. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you're you're simply not helping people if you help them when they're not willing to help themselves. You're, exactly. you're just capitulating to their demise. And so I need to, you know. I need to help those who want to help themselves. And so believe me, I've yeah. been trying to introduce it to people, you know, you know, open their eyes. And then I get shot down like Bud's sister did to me yesterday. And I'm like, oh goodness. No, and the thing is, is you you, you gotta stop worrying about that. That's their yeah. issue. That's not yours. You need But to then I was talking with her daughter, my niece. I was telling her about it first. And then when Aunt Lynn finds out, Aunt Lynn's gonna shoot her down about it. And I'm like, okay, here we go. So you I'm know, not they, even bother with them. Yeah, they can only shoot you down if you allow them to. Mm -hmm. So Joe, thank you so much for all your okay. help today. This oh, has been you. really, really good. And I'm gonna continue on with a little bit of more education here just because I've got something I wanna show all you guys. And that, you know, this isn't just an online business. You can do this, like I went up, I went up today to go get some corn just to get some, cause we're almost corn season's almost over with. And we have like the best corn on the cob on the planet. You tardy at corn. The sweet, oh, the I like, I eat it for dessert. <laughs> it's so <laughs> yummy. Throw butter all over it, salt and pepper. And Lovely. when we canned it, when my parents canned it or my grandmother canned it, that was our meal for the dinner, for our dinner. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> this is the point, though. I went up to go get some corn, 
and the kid that was there at the at the place it immediately started out because he was sitting there nobody was there and he was sitting there like on his phone and had his mask down underneath his neck and and i i come up and he immediately puts his mask up over his nose and i go you don't need to do that for me man in fact please take it off get that thing off of your pie hole and your fart sniffer brother you know and and that ended up into a really interesting <laughs> conversation and by the time it was said and done by the time i had my corn I had asked him how old he was. He said he was 20 years old. And I said, I got to ask you a question. And let me, let me ask you, what, what question do you think I asked him? If you had $150. Or exactly, you probably probably asked him about, have you heard of the crypto that is backed by gold? No, that one, I only asked that to people that I know are already involved with crypto. Oh, but that's what you asked me. <laughs> yeah, well, that was before Greg came up with the question. Before oh, I learned, yeah, but, yeah, but right. Once yeah. I learned a better question, I'm going to go use that better question. And so yep. my question is, if you could go back to 2010 and buy 1,000 Bitcoin for 150 bucks, knowing that today they're worth 10,000 each, would you do it? Mm -hmm. It's simple. And I mm -hmm. asked the kid, and he said, absolutely. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, then, brother, let's do a selfie. And so I got a, I got a selfie with him and, uh, you know, here it is. Here's me and this kid. Oh, neat. His mask down underneath his, his neck there. He's all happy, yeah. excited. He can breathe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing is, is, is he hates the idea that he has to wear it, but he's wearing it because he needs the money, he needs the job. And that's, you know, I can yeah. accept that from, you know, what bothers me is the people who are willingly wearing them. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and anyway, but my, my point of this was is that I told him, I'm going to fire you over a video when I get home. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And, and basically, I got his name. I got his, I got his phone number. Um, he's got my name. We got a picture with each other. So we've got a, we just started a relationship yeah. into this. And it was out there it wasn't right here on the computer it was out there in real life and um you know we had a great conversation about the things that are going on he's a young kid with a really solid head on his shoulders and you guys the thing is is wherever you go whatever you do anything whatever it ask the matter. question ask the question for crying mm -hmm. out loud that's all you got to do and keep mm -hmm. asking it don't worry about people who say no just like get out of here i don't have time yeah. for you Keep asking the question. Yeah. That's it. That's, it's as simple as that. That's all I've been doing is just asking the questions and, and then dealing with the people who are interested and not even worrying the slightest about the people who are not. Mm -hmm. Basically, for me, it's like, whatever. If you're that stupid, I don't even want anything to do with you anyway. Yeah. Thing is the other thing, Marilyn. People are very quick to prejudge you. Not I know. The opportunity. I know. So you can't be, you know, you, you can't be using yourself and as, as an example. Mm -hmm. Right. You let the videos do the talking. Right. But well, we've I, always said that. Oh, we've yeah. said that right from the beginning. She, and I've got a person just, here and she wants to do it all by herself. Always. She's yeah. getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. Because people know that she just works in a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not sitting on the beach drinking pina coladas. She's... Her lifestyle is what people judge her on. And they're like, well, I'm not going to have you tell me about how I should live my life based on what's happened to you. Mm -hmm. And what you're not showing them that you're actually showing them the opportunity, but they don't get that because they can't get yeah. past you. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you were to, you know, even be remotely interested in looking at a video, you know, I would say to people, well, what harm would come of watching a video? Yeah, Short that's video. what I should say. Yeah. Absolutely. Just, I've always said that because yeah. if you do the talking, then it's not going to work. We've said that time and time again. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying this to the same person here. And um, now finally, we're starting to talk to a few of her people mm -hmm. on, you know, on her behalf. And yeah. they're not going to turn around and say, well, you're this or why wow, I don't agree. Don't talk to my, you know, me about this because they don't know us. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what David David did 
is he didn't try telling me anything about this. All he told me was that, that his mentors were in New Zealand and he met them at a Congan water convention and, and that they know a lot more about it than he does. And he wanted to hook me up with them. And that's what he did. He hooked me up mm -hmm. with Joe and Barry and, and then they brought Neil on board as well. And, and, you know, the rest is history, baby. The rest yeah. is history. This, this is going to change mine and my wife and so many other people's lives for the best for such a long period of time to come. And I'm excited as I'll get out about it. And, and it was all because David, he didn't know anything about it. He still doesn't know anything about it. The knucklehead, he's, he's totally blowing it. And, uh, but whatever. And, um, you know, I just appreciate that he let me know about it, that he asked me the question and that mm -hmm. I was, I was able to say, yeah, I'd, I'd love to learn about it, you know, and I'm, I, I don't ever, I try not to ever say no to anything that I don't understand because mm -hmm. that's just the height of stupidity to do that. And yes. so before so I, I should change the perceptive when yeah. I get somebody like Bud's sister, yeah. that she knows it all. Yeah. Hey, you just, would you like you to just, watch this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Kelly, in answer to Kelly's question, because um, uh, I think you missed most of the training, but the 8% is nothing to do with what your CRU is worth in your back office. That's completely uh, nothing to do with it. That's only for people that have purchased. I was wondering what that was relating to. No, it's just mainly for people that want to get coins off the internal exchange unlocked right now. If you've got more money to invest in more CIUs, and yeah. then you can lock them up for three years at the eight percent rate, no. which over three years gives you ninety-eight percent return, <laughs> which is a bit yeah. of a no-brainer for most people if they've got no. an CIU. Is there a deadline to have to meet that being able to pay your minimum of two hundred dollars for something? to qualify for something yeah well right now that stuff doesn't really matter because of the internal exchange because okay. you know if you've got any cooth to you you got to tell your people the best way to jump on board with this right now because right now until the price of the of the unit goes up higher than you know 30 cents then yeah. it, it makes more sense to buy unlock units from the from the exchange. And so I'm telling all my people to come in at 50 bucks, but pay their $10 into the, into the uh, VIP club, then buy their $50 EIPS package. So they get started with the education. And then from there, they go spend the rest of the money that they have, whatever it is, they go spend that in the exchange and get as much bang for their buck as they possibly can. And the reason I do that is because I don't wanna, I don't wanna have somebody come in at, at the $250 level and get a thousand units when they could have come in at the $50 level and bought themselves a couple thousand units on the exchange and ended up with, you know, 2,300 instead of 1,000. I don't want them to come back to me and go, why didn't you tell me that? And um, if they choose, they want to do it differently, that's fine. But what I'm telling them is this is what's best for you. This isn't necessarily what's best for me, but it's definitely what's best for you. And the, the other way I look at it is that if you, if you help people jump on board with this now, because this isn't, this is just the beginning of this, you guys, these, these opportunities with CRU, you know, the similar thing with the CRU, the CRU is going to end up being the backbone of it all down the road, because that's back. That's the thing that's the backbone of the entire giant, $480 million and growing portfolio, right? But the things that are going to keep coming down the pike, we're going to have similar opportunities with them to do the same exact thing. And it's going to be working the same way. They're not going to be able to buy them on the internal exchange. They're going to have to buy them through the education packages. And so our ability to, to make commissions is going to come back through different processes and, and the thing is, is if we got people that we bring in right now and we show them how they can get this big, huge bang for their buck, get two different streams of income off of one investment, get something that's going to grow on both ends. It's just going to keep growing like a freaking weed. They're going to love us. They're going to see the, 
listen to me, they're going to see the, the gains and the growth in what they got. And what they're going to want to do is when the next one comes on, when the next opportunity to invest in the gold mining or the next opportunity to invest in the basalt or the opportunity to invest in data mining and, and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing that keep coming down the pike, what are they going to do? They're going to keep taking their money and putting it back in and guess who, guess who sponsored them? Guess who gets commission off of that? You. So do what's right for your people and, and it will, even if it doesn't benefit you in the short term, it's going to benefit you in the long term because they're going to, they're going to make money. They're going to see that they made money. They're going to, they're going to be stoked about it. And what are they going to want to do? They're going to want to make more money. And the way they're going to do that is by investing into the educational information packages. And when they do that, you'll get commissions, you'll earn money into your bonus wallet that you can turn around and reinvest and do the same exact thing. But right now, you know, this whole thing with the internal exchange happening, it kind of, kind of chopped off our ability if we have couth to, to earn commission if we really want to do what's right for our people. And, you know, I've just been telling my, this is what I'm doing. You guys do what you want. If you want to tell people to buy the two, $250 package, go ahead. That's your choice. I'm just telling you how I roll. I had somebody that wanted to come and buy a condom and water machine from me the other day who uh, somebody else told her about it. And I know that guy. And there's no way I'm going to steal his person. And I told her, I said, no, 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 you go buy it from him. And if, if you need any help from me, I'm here. I'm here to help you every step of the way. I'm here to give you all the support you need. And uh, no, I can't in good conscience. I cannot take his person. That's not going to happen for me. But most people would have said, sure. Yeah. Here's my, uh, here's my ID number, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not going to do that kind of thing to, to my friends or my family or anybody else, quite frankly. And so just one thing yeah. before I leave, um, for anyone that is questioning this, um, how you can, um, at least sound as if you know what you're talking about <laughs> is that when it comes to cryptocurrency, there's different coins on the market. There's an SDO, which is a secured token offering, and that's what we've got with the CIU. And that means that it's regulated, and not regulated where it's controlled, as in the banks or anything like that, but it's been looked at through the SEC. That's why when we go onto the market, the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, who, who they've been dealing with for probably the last eight, 10 months or more, um, they've had to see inside their entire portfolio. They've had to see every single uh, asset, money coming in, money going out, where it's going, where it's stashed. They want everything on you. And if there's anything dodgy about you as a company or you as a person, then you've got no chance of being part of something on, a, on an exchange platform to the world. Right now, as a private organization as we are, that might be a bit different and that might go on for as long as you get caught. But if you're going to launch an SDO like we are, which is the CIU, um, there's not that many coins on the market that are secured token offerings. So, you know, if you're dealing with someone that, you know, does know a little bit about cryptocurrency, these are the sort of things that you need to understand so that you can show them that then they might wake up to what's going on. Right. Now, the other coins that are on the market are um, what's called um, an ICO. And that's what's called an initial coin offering, which is what we could have done. But an initial coin offering means that they, they're not regulated. Anyone could sell them. And what happens with those is they go down the Googler quite quickly because you know, there's nothing to them. And they could be dodgy for all you know. So if you want to do a little bit of homework, you know, look up STO versus V ICO. And you'll see whole information stuff on that on Google. Because this is the difference between what we've got here. That we have got 
the portfolio. We, they have got contracts in all these companies. And so until you have that belief in, your, in what you're learning, and if you can try and get onto at least three of the open corporate you know, um, webinars every Saturday, we have to get up at four o'clock in the morning and we still do. We haven't missed one. You know, Sunday we got up at half past four and it went on till nine o'clock in the morning, Sunday, and we went back to bed. But that's because we've committed to wanting to know more so that we can share more. Not certainly not from that meeting because it's closed, but certainly a lot of things that we all are learning. And when people understand that you've got the belief because you are learning, then they'll probably want to join you. But if you're sounding like vague or dodgy because <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, yeah. they're going to see it straight away. And yeah. they're going to think, well, why would I want to do that? So keep informed with what's going on. That There's information everywhere. I mean, it's almost information overload. You have to almost check out of some of it because it's like, I don't need that. I don't need that. God, I've seen that. You know, there's information going into all the Facebook groups. There's like, there's the... Um, there's about four major new um, YouTube channels, um, other big groups, as well as the chat rooms. And then you've got the four corporate calls every Saturday. I mean, no one can force anyone to go onto those. They're available, but we see the same people on them, you know, night after night after night, week after week after, because these are the leaders. These are the people that really want to do it. It's all very well to say, I would like to do this in life and I'd really dream of doing this in life, but no, until you take the action to do it, it's never going to happen. Exactly. It doesn't just come in an envelope in your mailbox. <laughs> You've got to grow into that person. You've got to grow into that situation. You've got to believe oh, that it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> you stay plugged in. Now, Joe, what was that to look up the STO? What was that other one? STO versus ICO. ICO. Where do Sam, we Tom, that? Oscar. Sam, Tom, Tom, Oscar. And then I, I uh, Pat, Oscar. Oscar. And then where do we look it up at? Anywhere. Google. 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 Duck, oh. duck, go. Okay. Okay. Yes, STO versus ICO. Yeah, there we go. And that's what the CIU crypto unit is. Okay. Thanks now, because... Located the video for that. Ah, uh, there probably is. I don't know. I haven't... Just look for them. Just, you know, you could Google to your heart's content. It's like, there's lots of videos on the chat room as well. When one comes up, I would suggest that you save those URLs for the YouTube links that come up in the chat rooms every time they come up because within a week they're gone. They're miles up the thread. Right, right. So until you save them and you put them on your phone in a folder or in a computer, you know, in a, in a sort of, you know, we've got a whole list of YouTube Boy, links that we keep. <laughs> and then you can, you know, you can refer to those. <laughs> Quite a few of them are old already. And, you know, some of them are talking about the portfolio you know, being worth a hundred, you know, whatever it was, hundred million dollars. Now it's like, um, what was it? 477 million or something, but it, it just keeps growing. So we have to keep, you know, keep now what they're trying to do is create more and more um, video input so that it helps us to promote this. And um, so you just have to sort of keep up with what's going on. The eventy thing is going to be three days. I think it's going to be at a minimum of eight dollars to be part of it now if we had to fly to russia which we were really wanting to do plus our accommodation plus to get into the conference that was going to cost us thousands like it does with any conference that you go to around the world but this is going to be eight dollars or something you know quite minimal and you're going to be learning from some of the top leaders in this company that have been in it for years three or four more five years and um you know, if you don't get involved, all you know is what's going on in your house right now, yeah. apart from coming on this call. And that's yeah. it. That's not enough. This is a global business. It's growing in countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, middle of, you know, South America. India's just going through, the, you know, going crazy because people are talking to other people about it. 
Yeah. Anyway, that's ask about it. Question, <laughs> kids. That's Mark. all you need to do. Just ask the question and don't don't hesitate to ask it. It's a simple, innocuous question that most people are going to answer yes to. And when they do, if it's in person, get a selfie and get their phone number, send them the selfie picture and get them some information like stat and work with them. You know, that's all you can do. Don't worry at all about no's because the no's, they're just, they're not even worth your time to worry about. You, there's 7 billion people on this planet. Most of them are begging for something like this. Mm -hmm. So let's help them get it. That's, that's what our job is to do, is to get out there and help people get what they want. And if you yeah, do I've that, you get this. what you want. Introduce it to me. So. I've heard of it. Joe, thank you so much. Okay. Really I'll leave you guys to it. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a okay. Great okay. So much. Goodbye. Your hugs, Joe. See ya. Oh, here's a hug for you. Oh. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> all right so you guys i think that uh, pretty much covers everything for, that we need does anybody have any other questions that it was great you thank go you go through um this thing is getting recorded so you'd be able to cal you'd be go able to go back through and and listen to the part that you missed in the beginning okay. um but basically what you want to be doing right now is just be asking the question and try to get as many people on board with this as you can. And uh, whatever, whatever CRUs you have in your portfolio right now, you want to plan on staking those towards UNTBs. I don't know, how, ma how many do you have? I'm just, I can't remember. In my uh, CRU? Yeah, in your portfolio, in your CRU portfolio, portfolio. units, huh? Well, the can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, my portfolio is 400. Okay, so right now. That's pre-PO if the share. If you're not able to earn any other, any other units by the end of the month, and you've got 400 divided by 1,000, that equals 0.4 times 40 equals 16. So that's 16 UNTBs that you will have. And if those things are worth five bucks each by the, by Christmas, that's $80 a month that's coming into your wallet as the, um, as the secured coin, the S STU, I think is what it's called. But if those things, um, now those are those. You've got you've got sixteen of these units for your four hundred dollars, and if the let's say that that by March of next year they're worth a hundred dollars each. Whoa. Times one hundred. That's sixteen hundred dollars a month. Off of what a fifty dollar investment and some time what i don't i don't remember what you invested i think you only invested um fifty dollars but then you got the freebies and so that's why you have 400 of them or something well, like when that I got, when i got in there was a special that um that golden fry so it gave me a bonus of of um uh, instead of having to pay in 45 40 50 dollars for um package was for a forty five dollars. Right. So yeah, and you got the so I have like two hundred and fifty units, I think. Package. As soon as I have as soon as I have resources to buy, I can go ahead and get the next uh, certified account of the two hundred and fifty shares package. It's still waiting. Yeah, and so the point is, you guys, is that there's, you know, right now you really want to be reaching out to people, and like I, like I said, don't be trying to tell people what it's about. Once they say that they that they've got interest, just send them the video. Well, what do you do? How do you like the best? How do you respond to others that are kind of passive and not really initiating? 
much response as they would have. To somebody that's you, you've pretty much, with all of our back and forth, Callie, you've pretty much seen all of my replies to people. Invited, invited. You, you just need to just reply back with whatever suits your fancy. And if they're right. not interested, move on down the road. Don't worry about it. Just keep asking more people. Okay. There's so many people out there to ask. That you just I haven't had them. a whole list of I haven't had a whole list of uh, people uh, um, to people asking to be invited. I had gotten it shrinked all the way down. It wasn't very many, and then I was starting to build up again. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, just just keep asking the question. I I probably ask the question at least forty or fifty times a day, and um, you know that's that's pretty much what I'm doing. Everybody that comes across my feed, everybody that comes across pretty much everything, I just go ahead and send them the question. And I, I go over to their, I click on their name, I go to their, go to their profile, I look to see who they are, and I send them a message. I don't, I don't friend up with them. I don't send them an ad friend or anything like that. I just send them a message. And I'll say something like, hey, Paul, I saw the, the comment you made over on blah, blah, blah's uh, post about this or that, whatever it was. And I say, yeah, I'm just curious. I got a question for you. Simple. That's what I was wondering. How do you approach that question before you ask the question? Is what was Like I just about. said. Yep, I, I just know. Yeah, thank you. I, I see that they made a post on somebody's yeah. site, somebody's. Somehow they ended up coming across my feed because they, they commented on somebody's post. Yeah. And so I look at the post and I, you know, the post is about, you know, a cream cheese recipe or something. I don't know. I don't care what the post is about. Mm -hmm. But what I do is go, go over and, and, and click on their name and say, hey, Kathy, I, I just saw your post on, uh, you know, Joe Schmo's post uh, about cream cheese recipes. And, uh, and I, man, it sounds yummy. Hey, I just got a question for you. Yeah. And I ask the question. That's it. It's yeah. simple. Yeah. It's easy. It's, mm -hmm. it's not offensive. It, Look it, an it, icebreaker. It, You're giving recognition of something that they acknowledge something that they're already doing or engaging. Right. Right. Even, you're even in person, it, even in person, JJ, you would just let them, you know, start out a conversation and then uh, throw that question out there. <clears throat> yeah, you know, out in public, to be honest with you guys, right now, um, most of my conversations revol revolve around uh, petri Corona. dishes, <laughs> dishes over pie holes and fart sniffers, and yeah. um, and I get in there and I talk to them about the that petri dish that they're wearing over their pie hole and their fart sniffer, and that usually gets some giggling out of them, and yeah. that starts the conversation up, and yeah. then once Warm we up. Once we've kind of set a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a discussion, I say, hey, hey you know, I got, I got something I got to ask you. Mm -hmm. I got a question. Yeah. You know, and just like the kid today, I go, up, I asked him how old he was because I wanted to, you know, he's 20 years old. He's old enough to be able to do this. And um, he was excited as all get out. He was like, man, this sounds so exciting. And, um, you know, I told him about the basalt company. You know, that's another thing that you guys can utilize. If you haven't watched that interview with Andre and the guy that's running the basalt company, you need to watch that interview. You need to watch it several times so that you have an understanding of what this basalt company is about. You know, we're 50% owners in this company. And within the next five to 10 years, that thing's going to be worth a hundred trillion dollars or more. Wow. We get half of that. And you don't, you know, all you got to do is just understand what that's all about. You can build practically anything out mm -hmm. of basalt and it's stronger. It makes a fiber that's stronger than carbon and it's lighter than carbon. Mm -hmm. And so this is a tremendous opportunity for people to be able to be invested into something like this and be a co-owner. It's like, how would you like to be a co-owner of a hundred trillion dollar company? Heck yeah. And get monthly dividends off of it. You know, that's another great question to ask people. Yeah. Once you've started the conversation and, um, you know, but just. I'm getting excited to show it to my son because he's a mechanic and that, that would be right up his eye. I mean, like literally with this basalt company, they, they would be able to build, 
literally build an automobile that would be stronger, lighter, and mm. everything using basalt. And then when it when it doesn't run anymore, they melt it down and make another one. Completely eco-friendly, amazingly eco-friendly. And with this this world we're living in right now where everybody's all freaked out about the bitch. You know, yep. you, you guys all call her Mother Earth. I call her the bitch because that's no, what no. she is. No, no. I'm sorry, but this is something people don't understand. Most of the people who have lived on this planet since the dawn of time have spent their every single waking moment of every single day of their lives trying to defend themselves against the bitch. And they only finally got a chance. And, and some people, they don't, they don't ever get this chance because the environmentalists won't let them. They won't let them develop. They won't let them have a roof over their head. They won't, they've got to live in a grass hut. It can get blown down by the bitch at any certain day, at any old time. And I'm sorry. I don't care whether you're offended by it. It's the truth. The, the I like bitch, that. I she like doesn't that you care about point. you. She doesn't care about me. She doesn't care about anything. She'll blow your ass over in a heartbeat. We just found that out just the last week when we had 100 mile an hour winds here in the great state of Utardia with our mountains. How the heck that happens, I don't know. It never has happened before where we had those kind of winds. It blew over, four, over 40 diesels got blown over. Mm -hmm. and, um, and like trees got uprooted and you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trees got uprooted, big old trees just yeah. got ripped right out of the ground. So my son, you know, whatever about it that. Is what it is. I don't, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't beat around the bush about much of it. Yeah, anything, but I like but. that. You're like that. You open our eyes. It's really important that we see that. This is an opportunity for people to be able to protect themselves against yeah. Mother Earth. If, yeah, uh, you right. Know, and, and against all the other criminals. Well, my son was saying something about, about some kind of a environmental control. Like they're trying to even to control our population. It's all that. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, mm -hmm. and I think that this is, you know, I'm going to go ahead and stop.